several areas and the battle. Uh, which where can I go the other? So the star I
Of <laughs> course. <laughs> it's I, was a cheap... to I know. I was for it's unfair, no. wasn't it? You can no. see. <laughs>
the meaning of that encounter. We can be sceptical of individual details in the Bible. And we can dwell on the numerous parallels with Egyptian, Babylonian and Assyrian mores. What cannot be seriously doubted is that something else which has ensured that this and no other collection of books has become the sacred scripture of a large proportion of humanity. That there are living Jews who regard themselves as the heirs to the Bible, but no living Babylonians, Canaanites or Assyrians. That there is a voice which speaks here in promise of great vision, of dreams of world peace, of holiness, justice and mercy, of freedom and the unique worth of each individual as a child of God. Special Psalms of Rejoicing, 
which contain a verse particularly appropriate to today's celebration. Thereby Yom Asar Adonai Nahil This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice on it. This is a very great day. It is a great day in the history of the Royal Cornwall Museum. It is a great day in the history of the Hillat Kernan. It is a great day in the lives of those of us who have been involved in this project. It is a unique day because so far as I can tell, never before has a scroll of the law which was unused for well over 100 years been brought back to life in the way that we are doing today. The story of this scroll begins about 350 years ago in German Bohemia, today the western part of the Czech Republic around Prague, when a scribe wrote on a scroll in the way that has been traditional among Jews for thousands of years and which is still used. It was written on parchment from a kosher animal, using a quill pen, and using ink which the scribe himself would have made in accordance with the traditional recipe incorporating walnuts, ferrous sulfate, gum arabic, and water. The scribe would have viewed his task as being particularly sacred, for he was writing the word of God. And before writing the name of God, he would have immersed himself in a mitzvah, a ritual path, as a sign of purity, for he was a human vessel for divine words. A Torah scroll is written using only Hebrew consonants. The system of dots and dashes, which indicate the vowel sounds, which appear on your service sheets today, and the various sounds that set out the music sequence of musical notes by which the Torah is chanted during the service are both missing. It would have taken the scribe about a year to write the Torah scroll which contains the whole of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Around the year 1740, a group of families moved from Hamburg to Falmouth under the leadership of a man called Alexander Moses, known to history as Zender, which is a diminutive of Alexander, Zender Falmouth. When he asked the community at Hamburg, then one of the largest and most important in Europe, the scrolls for his new community, they would have agreed. Probably reluctantly. But are unlikely to have given him new ones. This scroll, which had somehow or other migrated from Bohemia to Hamburg, was a likely candidate for being handed over. Sifri Torah's scrolls are very precious and very valuable, and this scroll was probably already a hundred years old. The community of Falmouth flourished for about 140 years. The synagogue that they built in 1808 in what is now called Gillian Street still stands, although it was sold over a century ago, and is currently a private residence. The community involved itself in local life. Mainly they traded as ship's chambers, but they were also involved in tin mining, and one leading figure in the 18th century was a well-known local clockmaker. They acquired a cemetery at Ponsarden, which is still extant. 
Thanks. 
and Leslie Lippert's tenacity, <laughs> dedication, and unswerving negotiating skills. <laughs> <laughs> we were allowed to send this particular scroll to be repaired. So, I'd like to thank um, everybody um, on behalf of the City Council, everybody that's been involved, um, that's done so much work and dedicated so much time and energy to what's been achieved today. Growing up in my life, I've always been proud and very intrigued as well of the long and interesting history of the Jewish culture in Cornwall. One thing that I used to enjoy doing when I lived in Penzance was when I met a friend at the train at the railway station. Before we went to our drinks and that, um, I'd show them, I'd take my kids to the island and show them the door. And in that door there's a tiny little grill and you could look through and see the Jewish cemetery. And if it was a Jewish friend, they would be really surprised and I was really proud of that. <coughs> but I'm also very proud of what's happened today. I've never, never imagined this would be happening. Um, I remember reading the Lost Jews of Penzance from that point about 10 years ago. And it was very <coughs> kind of unheard of and um, you know, like a sort of like a little, little secret, a magical secret all this past. But now it's here it's big and it's important. And um, yeah, so thank you very much on behalf of very well Thank you. Firstly, Hilary Grayscale, the one director of the museum. Dear Hilary, when I first met you, I asked the museum, would they sell us one of the stories? You replied, absolutely not. <laughs> Leslie, who never, never lost faith.